Welcome to an example on how to find the general solution to a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation using the method of undetermined coefficients. This question we're told to use undetermined coefficients to find a particular solution to the given differential equation. So even though this question only asks for a particular solution, big Y of T, we'll actually find the general solution, which will be in the form of Y of T equals Y sub C of T, which is the complementary function plus big Y sub P of T, which is a particular solution. It's always a good idea to find the complementary function before determining a particular solution given by big Y sub P of T. And big Y sub P of T is the same as this Y of T here. We find the complementary function Y sub C of T by solving the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, and then to find a particular solution, big Y sub P of T, we guess the form of a particular solution with undetermined coefficients, then use that function to perform substitution into the original differential equation and solve for the undetermined coefficients. This gives us a particular solution, big Y sub P of T. So again, step one is to solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which would be Y double prime minus Y prime minus six Y equals zero. We can solve this homogeneous differential equation using the characteristic equation AR squared plus BR plus C equals zero, where A equals one, B equals negative one, and C equals negative six. So we'd have R squared minus R minus six equals zero, and solve this by factoring. The factors of R squared, the factors of negative six that add to negative one are negative three and positive two. So we have two real distinct roots, R sub one equals three, R sub two equals negative two. So because we have two distinct real solutions, or real roots, the solution to the homogeneous differential equation would be in this form here, which gives us the complementary function for the non-homogeneous differential equation. So we now know that Y sub C of T equals C sub one times E raised to the power of three T plus C sub two times E raised to the power of negative two T. Next step is to guess the form of a particular solution given by big Y sub P of T. So we're looking for the form of a function where its second derivative minus its first derivative minus six times the original function is equal to two sine four T. So because the right side, often referred to as G of T, involves the sine function, and we'll be finding both the first and second derivative, and we know the first derivative of sine involves cosine, the form of big Y sub P of T will be A sine four T plus B cosine four T. So in general, we can use the following table for the form of big Y sub P of T given this form of the right side of the equation, G of T. Notice how if the right side involves sine or cosine, big Y sub P of T will involve both sine and cosine. Next, we'll have to find the first and second derivatives before we perform substitution into the differential equation. So the first derivative is going to be equal to, well, the derivative of A sine four T is going to be A cosine four T times four, four A cosine four T, plus the derivative of B cosine four T is going to be B times negative sine four T times four. So we actually have minus four B sine four T. Now the second derivative is equal to four A times negative sine four T times four, negative 16 A sine four T. The derivative of negative four B sine four T is negative four B times cosine four T times four, so minus 16 B cosine four T. And now we'll use these functions and perform substitution into the differential equation given here to find the values of A and B. Let's do this on the next slide. So performing substitution, we begin with the second derivative. So we have negative 16 A sine four T minus 16 B cosine four T. And we have minus Y prime. We need to be careful here, it's going to be minus this difference. So minus the quantity four A cosine four T 
minus 4b sine 4t. Then we have minus 6 times divisional function y, which is a sine 4t plus b cosine 4t. And all of this must equal 2 sine 4t. So for our next step, let's go ahead and clear the parentheses. So these first two terms stay the same. And then here we can think of distributing a negative one. So we'll have minus 4a cosine 4t, and then plus 4b sine 4t. Then we'll distribute negative six, so we have minus six a sine 4t, minus 6b cosine 4t. And again, this equals 2 sine 4t. Now for our next step, let's go ahead and factor the left side of the equation. Let's factor out sine 4t from the terms that contain sine 4t, which should be this term, this term, and this term. So we factor out sine 4t, we'd be left with the quantity negative 16a plus 4b minus 6a. And now let's factor out cosine 4t from this term, this term, and this term. So we'd have plus cosine 4t times negative 16b minus 4a minus 6b, again this must equal 2 sine 4t. Now comparing the left and right side, we can set up a system of equations involving a and b. Notice this product involves sine 4t, and we have 2 sine 4t on the right, which means this quantity must equal positive 2, and because there's no cosine 4t term on the right, that means this quantity must be equal to zero. So this is called equating the coefficients. And let's go ahead and combine the like terms here inside the parentheses. We'd have negative 22a plus 4b equals again positive two. And again, because there's no cosine 4t term on the right, combining like terms here, we have negative 4a minus 22b would have to equal zero. And now we'll solve this system of equations on the next slide to find the values of a and b. If you want to use elimination to solve this system, notice how the b terms are already opposite signs. So let's go ahead and multiply this first equation by 22 and the second equation by positive four. Negative 22a times 22 is equal to negative 484a. And then we have plus 4b times 22 is 88b equals two times 22 is 44. Multiplying the second equation by four, we'd have negative 16a minus 88b equals zero. Adding the equations together, the b terms are eliminated, so we have negative 500a equals 44. So dividing both sides by negative 500, we have a equals negative 0.088. Now that we know the value of a, we still have to find the value of b. Using the second equation, if we add 4a to both sides, we know negative 22b equals 4a, dividing both sides by negative 22. We have b equals, this would be negative 2 elevenths a. So b is equal to negative 2 elevenths times negative 0 0.088, which equals positive 0.016. So now that we know the value of A and the value of B, we know a particular solution given by big Y sub P of T, and therefore we can also form a general solution. Going back to the previous slide, we use this form for our particular solution. We now know big Y sub P of T is equal to a, which is negative 0 0.088 times sine 4t, plus b, which is 0 0.016 times cosine 4t. So using this particular solution, 
which is what our question asks for, and the complementary function that we found first, we can form the general solution. But again, this question only asks for big Y of T, which again is negative 0 0.088 sine 4T, plus 0 0.016 cosine 4T. But let's also take the time and form the general solution. Again, the general solution is the form y of t equals y sub c of t plus big Y sub p of t. So the general solution is y of t equals c sub one times e raised to the power of three t plus c sub two times e raised to the power of negative two t. So this is the complementary function plus the particular solution. And because a is negative, we'd have minus 0 0.088 sine 4t plus 0 0.016 cosine 4t. Again, this question doesn't ask for the general solution, but yours might. I hope you found this helpful.